Hi, Spill NYC citizens. This is Bella Noche, or aka Isaiah Cruz, the Kachumi writer for Cocktails and Contours, and I'm here with my very special guest, Zalika Parson. Hi, it's me. Hi. It's me. Literally, it's me. Um, and it's it's her literally on my face. She did my face earlier today. I'm making sure this isn't on mute because that's why it looks like you got punched in the face. I it really does though, but it's like so glittery. It's legit. I'm gonna share this on my page. Perfect really lighting. Quick. Oh my god, it's share, oh my god, share, share, share. Um, Hi. so yeah, so we today we kind of had a makeup face off, and this is what happens. This is she has a very signature style. Um. And we're going to talk about it a little bit, but we start off every Cocktails and Contours with a cocktail. This is my favorite part. And <laughs> <laughs> Fuck everything we else, like drinking. this is the best part. Um, Zalika told me her two favorite alcohols were Fireball and Apple Cider, Hard Cider. So I decided to make a cocktail just for her using Apple Juice, Hard Cider. I used a Angry Orchard. I used the Easy Apple, their new Easy Apple, because it's less sweet. And then, you know, every every person's favorite shooter, Fireball, just because, you know, it's Fireball. What's not to like about it? So here we have our... It's, uh, apple pie. Apple, an apple, I guess apple pie. Apple, an apple Inferno cocktail, I like to call Inferno. it. Fireball. Cheers. Hope cheers. for, like, warmer weather coming up. Mazel. And cheers to everyone out there on Facebook watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so yeah, take a look at this face. This it's is insane. insane. And it's funny because I've seen um, your paint your face so many times. And is this this is the first time you put your face on someone else, right? Not my first time doing someone else's makeup. First time putting triangles on anyone ever that's Yeah, not this me. is this is this is her thing. Hashtag team triangles. Many have attempted, many have failed. I fail all the time doing it, but this time it was pretty successful. You know what's funny for it for makeup that doesn't look like it took that long? It actually took like a decent amount of time. I was I was it, no, I was surprised to learn that you're, she's yeah. actually like very precise. There's a method, there's everything, there's glitter. We know I uh, we know how much so I love glitter. Much glitter. I'm all about it. It's a lot um, of glitter. I like the glitter though. The glitter's fun. Well, I mean, I I always I try. It depends. I love glitter. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a crazy person. I love glitter, but I try not to overdo it because I used to literally my entire face. Is there is glitter. there is there something as overdoing with glitter? Yeah, there is. It's just like I'm overdoing with Disney right now, just for you. No, I know. Well, we have Disney everywhere. I'm such I'm such a Disney queen. I fucking love it. Um, Anyway, the thing we wanted to talk about today are finding your unique style. So any sort of artist, any sort of entrepreneur, everyone has to have their own unique style, right? I'm still looking for my style as we speak. But... Clearly. Well, no, it's on my face. I found it. Ah. Um, so I wanted to bring Zlika. She has a very um, uh, interesting, unique style. Obviously, she's you know known for her makeup and you know the, the team triangles. So how did you come up with that whole thing? Where did your aesthetic originate from come from what inspires you so team triangles i think it, it's been a year officially since i've over a year actually two months a year and two months or something so originally what it was was when i was first taught how to do makeup pro first time i was ever done face my face was done i was taught what was in what was out and how to put it on my face and right. i didn't like that i don't like shout out to whoever did it like he did an amazing job his name was andrew jardin he's an amazing fashion designer now but he started off with doing drag, and he taught me, he's the first one who's ever painted my face, ever. And I loved what he did, and I was like, it's, it makes me feel gorgeous, but I feel like I could feel gorgeous doing something crazier, and more right. dramatic. So, fast forward to when I started, I was like three years into drag, and I actually started doing a lot crazier shit on my face, which mm -hmm. I love doing, if you, yeah, trust me, this is, we couldn't this tell. is mild, this is me on mild, like, I don't have hair, so it's mm. easier for me to go even crazier. Like none. Like, no hair, no eyebrows. That's how she able to do this. I had to cover my eyebrows for this. Like, yeah. I usually go all the way up. She's like a naked mole rat. So, I got my makeup done, um, not to be that person, but Momo Shade and Aja took me in for like a, like a day. But like, we, we're still good. Cute. Like, great people, so amazing, love them so, so much. Momo Shade's fucking hysterical. Aja's off her craziness. Oh, we know. But <laughs> Momo painted my face with Aja looking on saying, no, you need to fix this, fix this. And it kind of put a fire under me because they were very precise in how they did their faces. It was This was like at least two years ago at this point. It's two years ago, actually. Two years ago. So I liked it. Still, again, I liked it, but something under my ass said, you need to do something crazier. And I wanted to like do something like that had like some kind of like gimmick. Mm -hmm. So originally I started out doing devil horns, and I, they used to be carved and looked exactly like devil horns, kind of like your triangle, but like inverted. 
And I loved it, but everyone's like, your angles need to be straighter. You need to do straighter lines, do straighter lines. So when I was like, fuck it. People I'm weighing just, in on art. I was like, I'm going to do so straight lines that these horns look like a triangle. And mm -hmm. out of nowhere, everyone was like, why the fuck are you putting triangles on your face? And I was like. It works for me. It's the straight um, line. Yeah, if we have any artists watching, whether it be performance, whether it be anything like that, comment what your unique style would be. Um, we're looking for, so like, hers is team triangles. Usually when I do drag, I'm very, like, mermaid -y. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's my, like, my yeah. style. My style is very, like, aquatic, nautical, bright colors, and, you know, you sparkly. Tell. They know, they know. But I'm just saying, everyone has their own unique brand and style. So comment with yours, and we'll share it on live, and we'll, we'll see how our unique styles add up for each other. Um, but it's funny because she, you're actually quite the accomplished drag queen. Would you like to tell everyone what your big Brooklyn title is? <laughs> <laughs> the one where I fell asleep or the one before that? No. The first, the better um, one. The first pageant I ever did, it was, um, and Cody Island and it's ran by world famous Bob. They haven't done it in quite a while now. I think we took a hiatus. That, yeah. But, um, I was, I'm still the current reigning. It was in 2015, but I'm the current reigning Coney Island Queen of Drag. Woo! Coney Island! I love Coney Island. And their symbol is <sighs> mermaid. It was like literally like one of the scariest, scariest moments for me because it was one of the first times I did, it was no Team Triangles yet. I still did. Very like crazy, but I have a friend, his, his name is Tony. Tony DeVita, he's into makeup, fashion, all that. He's leatherette as a drag queen. Okay. He helped me get, I was getting ready, he came over and he kind of like took an editorial look at it, like, okay, you're doing the crazy, but let's just make it like snatched. And turned out I won. <laughs> Rudy's asking if Paul is doing his science right. I know it looks like it looks like a chemical explosion on my face, right? I'm actually this is this is fact right now. <laughs> Girl, that glitter is giving you life, and you know it. It is. I wish you guys could see how sparkly it is. Like it's super sparkly. You can see the bottom. The bottom's all sparkly. I have. I, I'm obsessed with glitter, so I was very happy when she pulled out the glitter. I was like, yes. Um, but so it's, it's an interesting, we were talking about this earlier, it's such an interesting experience painting someone else's face. That was, no, I wasn't prepared for that because... It's, it's a challenge. As a fat person with no hair, I have such big face and such... And I'm the opposite, I'm a skinny with. person with a lot of hair. So I was like, going up, and I was like, oh, I really, I should probably draw the triangles lower, but I looked at the time, I'm like, nah, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll get used to it. You're she's like, we'll be now. done, we'll be done in an hour. Maybe an hour and ten. And then like an hour later, she's like, we'll be done in ten minutes. And then twenty minutes later, we're almost done. Because <laughs> I didn't account for, like, in my, in my personal appearance, mm -hmm. the, the, the experience, I'm a professional. Take two. Professional. In my personal, per <laughs> I, haven't even, I haven't even drinking, like, They're a really second. good. These They're are, like, really fucking again, good. apple juice, a little bit of uh, Angry Orchard, and a shot of Fireball. Let's take it. I love it. But, no, in my personal experience, that's the word I was trying to use. Personal experience. It depends on what I'm painting for, because yeah. even though it's like, okay, Team Triangles is my thing, I have four different faces as Team Triangles, so... Depending on, like, this, what I gave you today is what I would go to a show with. Right. Like, I would run there, I would do the whole damn show, I'd bring makeup to touch up, that's great. But that usually, for me, takes an hour and ten minutes, but that I added slack that's... time, so an hour and a half. It happens, but it happens. I'm so used to my bones now, now I looked at your bones and I was like, what the fuck am I doing? It's a challenge, it's a challenge. When I first started this uh, podcast, it was exclusively just a makeup swap, and that was one of the first times I ever painted somebody and everyone has such different faces, you know, as, as makeup artists and them stuff like that know and they are painting different faces every day. Could you imagine? Girl, I'm not a makeup artist. I'm like, just a person who We're makeup artists for ourselves, but when you paint someone else, it's, a whole it's almost starting at zero. Old. It's no, a totally it's, different game. It's a completely different game. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have actually, again, talking about being a successful drag queen, she just has recently landed a new weekly gig at a very prestigious drag lounge in New York City. Um, oh, actually, before I say that, uh -huh. we have a oh, question. We have a question. Fancy. How is that, how is it from Paul, how is it that Brooklyn became the borough with experimental drag? And so for those of you who don't uh -huh. know, there's a lot of, a lot of like edgy stuff in Brooklyn, like a lot of things that are outside of the box, which are mm -hmm. awesome and amazing. And we've both worked in Brooklyn before, and it's really, really outside the box. So 
do you have any theory how Brooklyn became that versus everywhere else? Um, I want to start off with a disclaimer. I am not the spokesperson for Brooklyn. <laughs> and I don't mean this in a rude way, but there are so no, many queens who are started in Brooklyn or moved to Brooklyn and tried making it their place. And then when they go to other venues, they're like, oh yeah, because you know, it's so Brooklyn, it's so Brooklyn. Like, for, in my opinion, when drag was still like the movement and like with Stonewall and everything, the Brooklyn scene was not a thing. Like, it oh was no, like Brooklyn, absolutely not. It was all Manhattan, so Brooklyn was not a thing. But then... The queens like a lot of McGriddles, Horachata, they very were the ones who were like, we're gonna keep, and Thorgy Thor, like, they were the ones who were doing drag in Manhattan, but in Brooklyn was the place where it was more like, the acceptance was more like, tuned up. Like, people, when you, like, whenever you, you the show, the, the difference between Manhattan and Brooklyn. Manhattan, whenever you go to Manhattan, it's very like, this is the drag show, tap dancing, live singing pretty but like brooklyn people who go to are hanging out in brooklyn they're not hanging out there to see oh my goodness it's another broadway show that's great they're there just they're there for a reason so yeah, yeah. and like i i think what it is is they could relate to them art more well i feel like it's more it's more i feel again most of like the difference of communities in manhattan and brooklyn were like one has just, you know, Manhattan's very, like, Broadway. Mm -hmm. Very, like, has, you know, almost like a movie quality yeah. aesthetic. Very poppy, very, like, top 40s. Like, the people you know. who are going somewhere in Manhattan, they're going there to see the divas. They're going there to see the environment that's around them is what they have. Like, me, lucky enough, like, since I'm performing in Manhattan, I could still do my edgy things where people right. are, like, entertaining. Well, there are bars you could do that. Boots and Saddles is one that is a wide array of queens. One of the bars that I work for, Rock Bar, also lends way to, like, edgier queens. So, like, mm -hmm. it's in Manhattan, just not as common. I think the final justification behind all of it is, is Brooklyn has always had that sense of art in it and that sense of, like, because even my, my parents grew up in Brooklyn and they, Brooklyn has always had that <laughs> sense of, hope and love and like yeah. that sense of expressionism whereas Manhattan has always been like that well we're at the Dow Jones we're gonna take the kids to the theater and we're gonna do the big no it's so true actually so. I, I, the, the biggest chunk mm -hmm. of my family resides in Brooklyn Brooklyn represent um no I'm just saying I grew up I grew up between Queens and Brooklyn side eye but go on side eye I can't give a side eye my eye's too big girl um, <laughs> it, takes, it takes years of pra two years of practice now to side eye um, with big makeup but no, Brooklyn is one of those places that has always been really, really close near to my heart, which is why when the first time we met, and I was just like, yeah, she's like, I miss Coney Island. I mean, it was just like, oh, I kind of like you already. You know? she's just like it, mermaids. It's different. But I grew up in <laughs> Coney Island. No, so, so true story. Mm -hmm. um, my aunt told me that when I was first born, her and my mom would go to the Coney Island boardwalk and smoke a joint, watching people go by with me in baby carriage. Is that fucking crazy? But that explains a lot. It does, right? Contact highs all my life. But I guess, like, the, so my final statement on the question is, is, because I feel like there's no right way to answer this, what, no matter what I'm going to say is going to piss at least one queen off from Brooklyn. You're not, if it's not, you're not doing it right. Basically, because now I still also do work in Brooklyn still, and the difference from my one, from Manhattan, from Brooklyn, physically seeing, is I could go on stage and I can do Hamilton on both places, but in Manhattan, if I don't know the words, people are going to be pissed, and if in Brooklyn I don't cry or show emotion, they don't care. So I'm guessing in my final sentence, right. Manhattan is more about the production value. Brooklyn is more about the emotion, the, emotion, the art, and the movement that you're trying and to And that make. makes complete and utter sense. Mm -hmm. That does. And that's and that gives a completely why it would lend itself to be more edgy and artistic because there, there's more raw mm -hmm. emotion in it. Yeah, absolutely. I could totally see that. Ugh. So if you guys have any questions for us, we love answering questions, clearly. She just went on for five minutes about one question. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about anything as far as the drag scene, makeup, or anything like that, or is like how she got my eyes to look like this, I don't no know. No one wants to know. Everyone just wants to know when you're going to take it off. I feel like Deadpool. Like, I get that a lot when I, my eyes I are chimmy, red. I want a chimichanga. When my eyes are <laughs> red, I get a lot. Yeah, like, she sent me a picture like a week ago, and I was like, come on, Deadpool. You look like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Um, actually, Zoe, she was talking about Coney Island dressed as a mermaid. Um, every sun, uh, every summer at Coney Island, uh, it's the weekend before Gay Pride Weekend, they do the mermaid parade in, uh, Coney Island. And, uh, I think that I'm gonna go this year. I think I might cover it for spoilers, just do it all in drag. Um, Hello from Aussie. Leah, hi, from Australia. Hi, Leah. Thanks for turning, for tuning in. Where Aussie, from Australia Aussie, Aussie. are you? I would, Australia's, Australia's a big continent. Are you from Sydney or from, like, somewhere else? 
if you're still watching. That would be interesting to know. I've always wanted to go to Australia. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Aussie, Aussie. <laughs> I'm sorry, she's so she's just always offensive. It's fine. But thanks for tuning in, Leah. Um, there's so yeah, I definitely want to do. Where'd she say? Canberra. Am I saying that right? I'm saying it like a Puerto Rican. Canberra. Well, welcome, Leah, from Canberra, Australia. We're happy to have you. <laughs> um, yeah, Zoe. Actually, I want to get I want to get a few people together and do the mermaid parade with like a bunch of drag queens. I think it'd be so much fun. Um, I have a few queens already who said that they would like do like a mermaid look and do Coney Island. You should come and like wear like your sash and crown and be like, I miss Coney Island. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, so the only thing that I will mention. I don't have a sash, and I have a crown, it's a dollar store crown, and it's a dollar store bouquet of flowers, because what they did was, was once you entered, they promised, they made sure every guaranteed everyone got paid, so it wasn't like a pageant based off like, oh, the winner uh, gets all the gig. money. It was a gig. No, it was a, like, we're doing this because we love it, not because one person deserves money and no one At least does. you got a crown, girl. So, you we're crown. loving, we love each other. It's, it's awesome. I would enter Miss Coney Island, I'd be like, shit, I grew up here. Well, world famous Bob, let's do it. Let's get it all. Yeah, seriously. I also love Coney need to Island. Step down from the. Court. Yeah, Zoe, you should come. I'll, I'll, I'll do your face and makeup and like mermaid skills. I'll give you like a mermaid skill contour and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I was like, imagine what would, what would, what would Zalika Parsons look like as a mermaid? I think she'd look more like a sea witch than a mermaid, though. I feel like if I did a mermaid look, which I would want to do a mermaid look. I'm not gonna lie. I like, I always knock down mermaids because I love annoying you. But if I did a mermaid look, I think it would be a very like leather and lace mermaid. I like that. And like a toxic spain, like you know, toxic a BP oil spill. Yeah. And it'd be like a latexy, but like lace entwined, and like it had like splatter up it. It'd That's be, cool. That'd be it, sick. It's one of the looks like if I did a mermaid look, it would either go all out or not do it all. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like certain looks, I'm just like, oh my god, I threw a chicken nugget bucket on my head. <laughs> I'm a McDonald's, yes, but like coke can in a wig. I've she did that. Time. She's done a coke can in the wig. How it's actually times? kind of funny. Yeah, Zoe, let's do it. I'm about it. She's actually Zoe's this great photographer. She was the one who did my Little Mermaid shoot yes. in the village. Yeah, yeah, I it was cute. Picture. It was cute. I wish I was a little cute. skinnier, but that's fine. <laughs> so I'm sorry talking to the wrong you. person. Um, yeah, that would that would be super fun. Um, so we have we still have like about like five or six minutes left. What would you, what would you say is like your biggest inspiration within New York City? Since this is part of my see, what would you how would you say that New York City inspires your art? Um, so not a lot of people know this, but the first time ever, and the one, one literally one time, first time ever I did drag was in New Jersey. And I know it totally does nothing to do with the question, but it's getting there. It's a story. So I started drag in New Jersey. The first time I ever did it, I looked a hot poo poo mess. You would look As so much better than I do. ever would in that moment. Just in that moment. It's the only time. It's the only compliment she'll ever give me. So, I like, literally, like, someone else did the makeup, someone else did the clothing, everything. But I fell so in love with it, like, the idea, I'm like, and I feel like when I go to New York, something bigger will happen. And it was the first time I saw a show in, Man in not Manhattan, Brooklyn, that I saw Severely Mame and Macy Rodman hosted a show called Bath Salts, a show for fuck-ups. And it was at Don Pedro's in Brooklyn. They're, I think they're closing down, unfortunately. Aww. Or they already closed down. I don't remember. So much stuff like that in the city now, but I know we continue. But they had... It was such a twisted show that made little to no sense. But, like, had a message behind it, and every performance was calculated. Like, nothing was just done to be, oh, this is a number, and give me money. Like, every little thing. And even if it wasn't calculated, they had such, like, depth to it that you were like, oh my god. This is rehearsed. That was one of the moments that, like, made me be like, I'm definitely, like, doing this bigger. And then the other one was, um, two different drag queens in Manhattan. Ari Kiki. The first time I saw her, I was like, yes. Like, something, like, the whole fucked upness, like, the parts that don't make sense, but it's so calculated. Yeah. No, yes. she's brilliant. Ari Kiki, she's, I mean, if you don't know her, go see her. She's fucking incredible. And then the other end of the spectrum, Logan Hardcore. I saw Logan Hardcore for the first time in Fire Island She's doing her amazing. pool show. She's insane, and so, I love her. She's incredible. Not her performance. Uh, like her, don't get me wrong. Like that sounds stupid. She is when she jumps in that pool, girl. Not she her, jumps in the pool at Fire Island. And I'm just like, yeah. Not her performance is what that I'm saying. I'm saying how she holds herself. And if you notice, she has little. I'm, she'll never admit it. But look at her makeup. She got little baby triangles. I saw that. 
And I was like, wait, I need to do more angles. Stolen. So. Stolen. And the team triangles are stolen, too. That's not even original. Nothing's That's, original Nothing's anymore. original. Girl, I'm a mermaid. Those things have been around for decades. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it, is, it is what it is. And that's why when you're searching for your unique style, bringing it back to the topic of what we're talking about, know that everything's been done. Be as original as you can be, but don't get mad if you see it somewhere else. Because everything's been done. And it's crazy you say original style, because other than me and Ari Kiki at Boots and Saddles, like, I'm not trying to, like, knock them out to our own horns or anything. But if you look at each queen... It looks like everyone's in the same family picture except me and Ari. Oh yeah, but That's I'm not mad at that. No, she's like Uncle Fester and like the the ginger like adopted child. It's amazing. They're like, oh, I'm the pet dog. That goes without saying. <laughs> no, we're good. I love you, girl. I love me more. I know you do. Um. Anyway, this has been Cocktails and Contours with my very special guest, Zvika Parsons. She is responsible for this face. She is responsible for all the shenanigans that go down after 10 o'clock every Monday at Boots and Saddles. So if you want to see more of her, if you want to see this face on her, guarantee you it's like even more intense than mine. Go check out her Boots and Saddles show. Mandatory and Mondays. Mandatory Mondays, which I, Bella Noche, will actually be a guest of on Monday, May 9th. Not this upcoming Monday, which you can still go to. Katrina Lovelace will be there. Katrina Lovelace will be there. She's incredible. I she love her. She can dance and she she's, do no, things she's, and I'll never she's, be able to do. She's, she's good too. So just go the next two Mondays. She's actually the show. one who create, gave me the, the strength. Like, she said fireball and she's the first one who ever, like, there you go. Good. Put it in a good word. Tell her I'm yeah. making good. Anyway, spill it in my seat. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'm back here in two weeks with another Cocktails and Contours. Have a great night, and cheers. And my Instagram is at Zalika Parsons. I, I gave her the opportunity to plug. She stayed quiet. I think she's just drunk. <laughs> what about my Friday show at Drag Race? Nobody's hosting Drag Race at Bizarre Brooklyn. I don't know. Plug Brooklyn yourself, Bizarre. girl. You wow. literally have, like, 25 seconds. Okay, so Monday's Boots and Saddles after 10 o'clock. Friday's with the Nobodies, Nobody's Hosting Drag Race at Brooklyn Bazaar, and everything else is on my Facebook, and my Venmo is hat Dream Triangles. Dream Triangles. Dream Triangles. Dream Triangles. Not Team Triangles. Spell that right. Spell that right. T -A -M -T -R -I -A -N -G -L -E -S. Get that T-A-M-T-R-I-A-N-G-L-E-S. Spelled. Thank right. God she's good for something. Anyway, my name is Isaiah Cruz, a.k.a. Bella Noche, with my special guest, Zalika Parsons. Thank you so much for tuning in, and have a beautiful night. Goodbye, Zalika.